What's up, y'all? Shuffle. Recording this entire video a second time. Because my incredibly high galactic size IQ brain forgot to press the record button. Professional content creator, by the way. This hasn't happened in a while, but this is my team focus series this used to be called team of the week in dd1 it is now called quest for the best this is a series where we look for obviously good teams but they're not always good teams sometimes they're just fun teams or it's more like an educational thing just to get you to think about things and synergies that you may not have thought of before because team building is super fun in this game and i think it's one of the best parts and usually people like it but there's a lot of stuff that goes into it that may not be as obvious without a lot of experience. So I guess that's why I'm here. This team is using the DLC characters because people were asking for a team that can incorporate both of them. I didn't realize it was named. I thought I was cool when I came up with this team, but apparently it has a name. And uh, cause I've been using this for a while, like right after the DLC came out, but maybe it had the name then. I just didn't notice. Anyway, this team is focused on aggressor and making aggressor really really good and so we'll start with aggressor start with ray and for the loadout obviously aggressor is focusing on executing enemies executes you on the upgraded smites really good the reap execute for the strength token is really good too so we pick both of those best frontline ability might be the best skill on the character bulwark of faith this move is dumb because it has multiple taunts and a relatively low cooldown and regeneration. It's pretty good. Then we have Inspiring Cry. We're not going to pick Battle Heal because when Ray has to do damage and tank and heal and stress heal, his turns get way too competitive and it's very, very easy to make a mistake. So we're going to avoid that. To get Aggressor all of the burn synergy it could ever freaking want we're gonna take bonnie so we're gonna use runaway and it's your choice on if you want to run orphan which works or arsonist which also works i prefer arsonist myself because you don't get the low hp thing and you don't necessarily have to master dragonfly immediately because if you use orphan you get the minus two burn. I'm pretty sure this makes it so Dragonfly just doesn't exist because it has no burn at that point. So having to master it early on, you know, can kind of suck. But the master version is still really good, especially like on Arsonist where you get the full damage. So still a great first point if you want to spend it. Like I said, I prefer Arsonist. And in terms of like the necessary skills, these are like the three you need. So... You have the burn to set up Ray. She's faster than him, so it should go off consistently. You have Ransack to just kind of chip in damage, pull units forward, because one of the things this team is going to struggle with is hitting rank four. So being able to pull those backliners up front, disrupt stuff, can go a long way. And then Smokescreen, which is a really, 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 really good ability for many reasons. And so with... Those, if you're running Arsonist, if you want to slip in, like, Searing Strike, just have some rank 1 hits that Ransack doesn't hit, then you can. If you want to use something else, uh, Cauterize might be a little hard to fit in because she has to be in the back and then get to use it, so you might not be there on the right turn. But you can run Hearthlight isn't terrible, especially, like, Mastered. Uh, run and Hide, not bad if she has to survive, you know. Uh, control burns pretty good. Anything that gets multiple actions. The burn res pierce should only apply to the first hit, not the extra hits, because it's not her casting it as the token, to my knowledge. But if you're an orphan, you can switch up some stuff. Still keep these three, by the way. But then you can slip in like fire starter, and there's really no good fifth move for either path here. So I'd say like it can still be cauterize, but that last one's a tough one to figure out. It's gonna be something niche. Got a phone call. Everyone wants to talk to the chef. I don't understand. Long story short, no super strong fifth move that I can conceive. So if you find something that works like super good, let me know. And then do we we cover duel? Do we cover duelist? 
I don't think we did. Yeah, I, I started with Ray. Okay. So, you have a couple options with Duelist. I would say Antagonist is probably the best. And let's see. I want to, before we continue, I want to curse you with some knowledge, though. With Bonnie, right? You got a little seal path here. Do you ever notice that Orphan and Arsonist have the same background? Like the same metal or whatever? Like they're the exact same, except Arsonist is slightly smaller. And like, oh, that's kind of weird. So doesn't usually repeat with the other characters, right? Oh, never mind. We got one here. But then, why is it why is it even like that? I don't get it. Yeah. And then Duelist has like three different ones. Cool. All right. I don't know why. Okay, just distracted by the most ridiculous stuff. Antagonist, I would say, is the best just because it's easy to use. And Aggressor is a really good execute path. Not really known for its damage, so we can help it out by using... Vuln tokens from stance, like if, uh, for an aggressive, and we can also mitigate damage by throwing weaken and stuff, which is nice. A faint just to flip stances, boot to pull things up forward, because, you know, again, that's kind of something the team struggles on. Meditation is just really ridiculous, especially when mastered, so we just have that. Always the fallback, and then Coup de Grasse can throw out a couple debuffs, or if you're in defensive and it's mastered, you can stun an enemy, which is very nice. I think if you're going to run something else, then I wouldn't necessarily recommend Intrapede. I don't think it's that good for what we're doing. Instructress, though, is a path where you say, hey, I want this character to be super strong. So it's either Leper, Alien, just any massive damage dealer. You can even do like a cultus on Warlock or something. So there's a lot of good stuff to do. The two most important things from this though are again and Ruthless because that's what Instructress is pretty much focusing on. So having again, giving them the 10% damage per stress effect, that's really strong. A cultus has it on Shambler's Eye, I believe. And then there's Hierarchy of Sights, which also gives it to you. You're not usually sitting at zero stress if you're going through a run. Usually people are like one. I mean, one's not a huge you know, bump, but like two, three, four. Those are all solid increases in damage. If you're fighting a boss, you might be up to like six, seven. So that's a lot of potential extra damage. And then when you have this mastered, you get the extra turn. You can get some stress on the side of it. So hopefully you can deal with that some way. And then you have Ruthless Instruction, which you use after, you know, if you want to dodge that stress. Although I think, let's see, defensive. Are they both defensive? Okay. So yeah. Oh, dang. This almost cancels it like one to one, right? So you can go, hey, I give you this extra turn. You get the three stress next turn. I take it off. That's nice. And then with aggressive, you give them free crit so if you want to give them the 10 percent extra damage next turn they get two stress and crit like there is some ridiculous i didn't know how powerful these two were together like i played this path a few times i like it but i always focused on again i didn't realize that this was just like the one two combo that's really good this might be better than antagonist i don't know i don't know but yeah so uh disengage not really what we need in this path unless you want to Wait, does this not even give her stance? It inverts? So your turn one's pretty much meditation, right? So meditation, invert, disengage. If you want to do all that, that's a lot of stuff to do on turn one. I'd rather just like meditate and start doing stuff. So this is closer to what I would recommend like this. So turn one, probably meditation to get into a stance and then you can faint to flip it. And then you can start throwing out buffs. Usually you don't really need to do all of that on like a road fight, but you know, bosses and stuff, it kind of pays off. So there's stuff you can do there. But as I said, antagonist, I'd probably do this. And in terms of mastery for the entire team, probably touche first alongside maybe Dragonfly or Smite and Reap, just something like that. Just so you can get your damage off the ground very quickly. 
And then the final character is Alchemist, just because it's brain dead. And it kind of gives us some really strong healing presence, token removal, or at least negative tokens. And then we get, obviously, a ton of blight damage. So this kind of team does pretty well on most things outside of Act 2. It's going to struggle really bad without Orphan there. So just keep that in mind. And in terms of, like, the regions... The Sprawl is going to be the hardest, so you probably want Orphan for that. If you're going to fight Librarian, if not, then it doesn't really matter. Arsonist should do just fine. But if you're going to fight Librarian, probably switch to Orphan or start Orphan if you want to. Because Bonnie really likes those Sprawl Trinkets because they're a lot of damage potentially. Or do the Classic and Swapper for Bounty Hunter. And I think that's about it. Okay, yeah, so first upgrade, probably Touche, just to get your stance immediately and do some damage. And uh, you got Reach and a rank three, which is pretty helpful. So probably Touche first, honestly. If you're running Orphan, then Dragonfly first. You can even probably skip Touche. But I would also definitely get Plague Gra uh, Grenade mastered immediately. Usually the first in. If you got two points, it's probably Touche and Plague Grenade. And then later on, it's like Dragonfly and Spiring Cry. If you haven't done like raise damage already. So the reason is because the reach again. So having something that consistently just pumps out some extra damage is how you're gonna deal with those rank four units if you're not pulling them and stuff. Alright. That's it for the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you're thinking down below. Let me know if something worked for you, if you changed something and it did better. I'm always curious to hear. And in terms of the teams that I picked for this series, I have a list that I'm working down. I also take input from the community, so if there's other stuff that looks cool and you want me to cover it, then I shall. Also, the playlist is on the YouTube channel. I don't know if I put them in the descriptions anymore, but there is a playlist for this series, too. So. That's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.